Marcus. How are you? I had a couple of days off in because I was in 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 LA. How was LA? Uh, very cool as usual. Yeah? It's a very inspiring city. Yeah, I had this um, nice uh, Tesla Model X uh, as a rental, and <laughs> I always tried to 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 take something new to for test drive yeah yeah. it was your first time in a, in a tesla <laughs> no not really the first time in a tesla mm-hmm. but in a model x yes and um and it's different to drive it in the states than to drive it here in germany yeah? is it? and it fits quite uh, much better because the range is is bigger because you do not drive so fast yeah, right. in average and that makes it makes more sense yeah, yeah. And it fits super to the roads in LA and, and it was very comfortable. Yeah, it was great. Great experience. Yeah. Interesting cars. Uh, very cool. And you're in their environment. There. Are you driving an electric now in Germany? I do. Um, I'm driving a, a Audi RS e-tron GT at the moment. It's great too. Yeah, it's completely different. I was just, I'm always I'm trying to drive as much different cars as I can. Yeah. Uh, this because of the e-legend project because I want to find out um, what is the the level, what is the status quo in electric mobility, yeah, in yeah. terms of speed, my, range, and 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 handling of the different cars. I had a you- Polestar, yeah, and uh, I was test driving the Polestar for more than one and a half years, really? um, and Polestar two. I was lucky to get one of the first Polestar 2s here in Germany because we used to to work for Volvo and Polestar in our design studio as well. And so Thomas managed, Thomas Ingenlatt and Max, they managed that I, I had one of the first cars here. Yeah. yeah. And But this was great also. Very, very agile feeling and, and super... Uh, a solid feeling yeah like a Volvo right. almost but then yeah, yeah. super sporty and lots of torque and power and this is always about the overall weight of the car and then the, the size of the battery where the battery is placed in the car and um, no I tried to to drive as much as I can yeah with uh, with different electric cars so <laughs> yeah, yeah do you find I, I would <laughs> well when i was i have an e-tron here at home and in day-to-day okay. life i love it uh it's interesting i had the the q4 in california and in some canyons and and really enjoyed it actually surprisingly i didn't expect to like the q4 in canyon roads and you know i like the q4 but but as a canyon carver i wasn't expecting to like it as much as i did but mm-hmm. but in in germany i will say like i also drove a q4 there it was on the autobahn that's the one place i didn't like it and it wasn't because it wasn't good at speed but it's just because you see the rain you know when when you're in those right. unlimited speed zones right and i'm blasting between like say munich and stuttgart or or up mm-hmm. up the a9 to to ingolstadt like you just kind of see the rain <laughs> the range dropping a bit faster and so it kind of i found it slowing me down because it, even with my e-tron i can go so much further if i drive you know sane speeds <laughs> it's mm-hmm. And so uh, that, I think that's the only one place I don't like electrics is is at yeah. unlimited speed. You are right. You are right. There's this issue once you start to speed on the autobahn. Then, yeah. I mean, with this um, tall batteries in in the Audi RS e-tron, for example. Yeah. I think it's 94 kilowatt hours. Right. Uh, yeah, this is um, at, at least gives me the chance to go to Munich. This is 100 kilometers yeah towards the south and then back with one battery yeah and i can also speed yeah that's what i like i can do 180 200 and they don't it doesn't feel slow at all yeah. right and this is at least i think this is a breakthrough uh, because um yeah 200 kilometers is a must yeah and with, yeah. with, a, with a higher speed well, and to be fair, right, the Q4 is the least powerful in, in the Audi range. I know I was on, I don't forget which Autobahn it is between Stuttgart and Munich, but I, a Taycan Cross Turismo came out like he, I don't know if he had to send a text or whatever, but he, he came past me quite quickly and then kind of slowed down, got, got to the right and then got back in the passing lane. And man, the power those cars have 
uh, yeah, yeah. which of course same chassis as the e-tron uh gt but but like um it's, it's great it's, it's phenomenal to see it go back into warp right to like just get back up to speed it's, it's, uh, it's the handling is incredible yeah i must yeah. say i had cars like rs4 audi rs4 rs6 in the past i uh, grew up and uh, maybe i can tell you a little bit yeah, about yeah, that, my, my father and and in his work and he always was so close with his audi um he had his whole career i think he started with um of course um there was a time before the audi quattro <laughs> the, no. the audi has been a bit simpler but but then he had this uh, audi's audi ur quattro the normal coupe and he never made it to he never he, he never got a um a sport quattro because it was even in 1982 it was out of uh, reach yeah it was right. too expensive for him but he worked on it but and he was a big fan and he had this ur quattro and for several years it was a red car with white wheels i was have one here on my table to make a small i may have <laughs> it was like it's, it's, yeah uh, for me i was a little boy this was very impressive and then after that he had this audi 200 quattro with the five cylinder turbo i think it was a different name in the us for this cars the, yeah the 5000 5000 yeah, yeah and here it was called 200 and uh and then he had another one with um um is this sure what i'm sharing here this is from the hotel exactly, yeah this is this this is this car yeah this was this quattro Your quattro so yeah. so really quickly hote hote design is your family business yeah your father started this studio he started the studio in 1982 yes before he he spent uh, almost 17 years in audi in the today it's design and okay so, it was called styling <laughs> so he styling was in-house at audi for what period of time this was before 1982 17 years so okay. Yeah. 65. So the yeah. yeah. So the as it sounds like then right from when they go from Mercedes to Volkswagen Group and and um the the beginning of the modern era. Yeah, that's that's yeah. when it all started. So exactly. I think his boss was Vakus, okay. Hartmut Vakus, and um, he was also the the person who um, gave my father the the, the opportunity. He said. Wolfgang, you're a great, great model maker in house, because at the end he was in charge for the model making in the little styling department. You cannot compare it to today's design department, but it was only a few few people. But um, they made interesting things, and they started to to build see through models. And mm -hmm. for the competition in Wolfsburg, then they showed up in Wolfsburg with see through models and Wolfsburg design. They had only solid models and so on. And they started to do a little competition between Audi and Volkswagen. And um, there was, yeah, I think lots of um, interesting um, new solutions in model making they invented these days. And yeah, and Vakus was quite impressed also because my father, he was always, I wouldn't, wouldn't say work workaholic, but he was very, it was his life always, yeah, and uh, still is in work. That's what he loves, and no, he, he has no other um, hobbies. <laughs> and um, and uh, yeah, after that, he uh, Vakus asked him or said, why don't you go outside and and um and run your own business we need people outside they can work extra hours they can work through the weekends but in in-house in audi we, it's not so easy um and, and and so he he took this opportunity and uh, it was quite a risk yeah he didn't have money and so he looked around and he found this place out here in 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 Bayern, Greece. There was a, a friend from school. He had a business out here, and um, luckily there was a, a empty little hall. 
he could use for his first activities. Yeah, this was our studio one. We still have it. It's a tiny little place, and they they worked. And then immediately the first work showed up um, because yeah, they had lots lots of things to do, and there was this project to do work on the homologation car for the rally sports. Okay. And, and um, I have maybe I, I have uh, forgot to to look at this. Uh, I have some Polaroids, two or three oh, yeah. Polaroids. The sport quattro is standing in the studio and they didn't really care and they didn't know that this is uh, so special now when you look back the sport quattro or the quattro era was a very very or it's the era audi is famous for and, right um and it, but these days it was work yeah it's and they, they it's, work on it. yeah. it's funny a, a couple I, I i don't know about a year ago uh, i had peter burt whistle on Mm -hmm. I don't know if you, Peter, and, and he, uh, he mentioned, I think it was surprising to me where at the time the Sport Quattro is being developed, you, you know, you're at the end of the evolution of this car and, and so much of the design studio had moved on to the more aerodynamic era of the, the, the 200 or the, the, um, the B390 where, you know, for the, for the designers, the, the, the interest at this point is, you know, the aerodynamic cars, not the, not the sport quattro so when he got the sport quattro job of course now it's this icon but but at the time it was kind of the old thing right so like it was less interesting it's interesting yeah. it's fascinating to look at that time right of how how things were yeah, very it's, it's, different. It's fascinating that's true and that they, they worked on different things at the same time but um i think peter bird weasel um remembers that he's, he's been here i think they're friends with my father yeah and um but didn't have contact for a while. Um, I don't. I'm not sure if he's still active. He used uh, to do a Mazda design then in Germany. I think later on. Yeah, he ended up, I believe, head of Mazda design, and then he he um, I, now he's retired. So uh, mm -hmm. I think he's still active on social media, and you know he he wrote a book, etc. But I don't think he's actively designing at this point. Yeah. He used to be here several times as well. Yeah? Oh yeah, back in the days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and yeah, this was my the whole, yeah, the whole. I, I grew up with with Audis, yeah. So huh. my mom had a, like an Audi one hundred, and my father father had an Audi two hundred at home, you know. And this was like all these cars, like right. uh, yeah. And uh, of course, there was always this experience to to go fast on the autobahn as well, yeah. And uh, I remember, and now it's a different thing it's much more traffic and we have this incredible fast cars now like audi rs6 or um, even faster like porsches or whatever they they do 300 or more kilometers an hour right and uh, you're still allowed to do that it's quite scary sometimes but in the in this e-tron gtrs i must say 260 is the limit Oh, is it? It feels very solid and very, very easy going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. Just effortless. Yeah. To get, I'd imagine at that speed, just the torque's as immediate as, as any other speed. Like I, I had, I can't say I've been that fast in an electric car. No, I, I just, I, 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 yeah, it's easy. It's easy yeah. to reach top speed once you, once you're on the autobahn and you want to test it, it's so fast and it immediately it immediately goes to top speed. Yeah, and then it's blocked. It's limited. Yeah, but it's great. It's a great feeling. It's yeah. It, I, but the cars have always been fast. I mean, I remember my father's cars. They did 260 as well. Yeah, this all two uh, five cylinder turbo, yeah. uh, all 200 Avant. Yeah, <laughs> it was super fast car. Uh, always a little. A little tuning you had there was a chance to to modify the engine with with a chip tuning as well yeah, yeah. A little tiny or the turbo charger a little bit bigger than than normal and <laughs> things like that <laughs> and uh, yeah this was then the, this this cars have been very fast yeah. and and uh, they had this nice sound i must say well yeah. that's that's one of the tricks for electrics right is is i um is and the, the weight of the car and yeah 
we still have to work on that. Yeah, I, I mean, um, on the on our Elegem project, for example, we, yeah. we try to to bring emotions in with um, yeah. Or add lightness. And this is one of them, uh, is is one of our. Uh, um, Actually, um, if I can interrupt, just for the for the um, just for the sake of the conversation for people who may be listening, probably ought to. Uh, I I saw your car when we were over there, but would love to. Maybe maybe we start from the uh, what what the e legend is right like the the it's it well it's it's basically a, a an homage to the Sport Quattro in electric form, but. Could you give me the basics on what the car is before we uh, yeah, jump into sure. the philosoph phil sure. philosophy of it? Yeah, it's a complete new car. Yeah, the only thing you may you may see it in the background. Yeah, yeah, it reminds you um, on the Audi Quattro. It's but it's a it's um, a new interpretation. Uh, the design of the car is inspired by the old Audi Quattro. Yeah. It's a you, if you want you can say it's a homage uh, to this to this very famous uh, Audi Sport Quattro, yeah. And um, you you will find several features in the car, yeah. You see this this black mask in the front, for example. You you got a similar theme on the old car, but everything is new and new interpreted. We don't we didn't want to copy the old car. This was not um, our our goal on this project yeah so it, it, also the technical platform is is a is a, is a complete new carbon monocoque yeah? okay with two electric cool. engines yeah so the carbon monocoque is a is a development from a, a, a development partner you have there in germany yeah it's a partner for a long time and these guys they are really able to create um cars from scratch yeah they 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 know everything about it they do the complete thing and they have this um super cool carbon monocoque platform um and we modified it to to make it fit to the e-legend and in combination with two strong electric engines i mean every en engine gets maximum power of 360 kilowatts and we, we we do we, we combine these two engines, and at the end, we uh, we limit the whole system to 600 kilowatts. But this is packaged into a, a complete new carbon monocoque. It's it's a monocoque like you usually have in a McLaren or in a Ferrari or in a Bugatti yeah? uh, or yeah. in Lamborghini maybe. It's very light, very stiff, and it's more racing, gets this racing spirit. Yeah? And um, yeah, and the bodywork and the interior, it's also made in carbon fiber. And this gives us the chance to, to reach a, a total limit of it's 1.7 1, 1. tons maybe. In in pounds, uh, you may you may have to translate because I'm I'm not I'm not really into pounds at the moment. But um, it's com compared to to a standard or to a normal electric sport car like a, a Porsche Taycan Turbo, it's a lot lighter. How, uh, how heavy did you say it was? Kilograms. It's actually one thousand six hundred and eighty. Yeah, okay. this is what the engineers say. What the car is. So th thirty seven hundred pounds, and and uh, uh, as comparison's sake, I I don't know offhand that what the Sport Quattro would have been, but I think the Quattro is probably about um, the original Ur Quattro. So we're talking nineteen eighties lightness, yeah, right? Yeah, it's it's probably about stuff. it's probably about thirty two hundred, thirty three hundred mm -hmm. pounds, maybe. Uh, so so that's remarkably light for a for a an electric car. I mean, yeah, one third is the battery, yeah. I mean, the battery is heavy, yeah, but uh, I think j there's a chance for to... For hmm? comparison's sake, a, a, a Q4, which is the Audi's smallest SUV, is 40... Uh, the rear-wheel drive is 4,600 pounds, the Quattro is 4,800 pounds. So you're talking very, very light for... Yeah. Uh, I, I could check e Audi e-tron GT too, but... Um, uh, this is 2.3 tons. 
Yeah, but it, yeah, over five thousand pounds uh, mm -hmm. for the Etron GT. So, and you're at thirty six hundred. You said, or, sorry, um, one thousand six hundred thirty kilograms. Sorry, yeah. I really want to start. To no, no, that's fine. These numbers. In no, the we time. should. Uh, we Americans could could stand to be a little more metric sometimes, but yeah, it's thir no, thirty seven hundred pounds. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, that's that's, it, that's yeah, to see that it's a really um one of the usps it's really really light it's a light car this was what this is what we like we like to have a good um, a, a, that the car is also good on the brakes right yeah? and this it, 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 it got a for the handling um uh, it's um i think this makes the difference Let's see. We we have to um, come up with our proof of concept yeah. soon. Um, it's in the making. We do prepare a, a full running carbon monocoque chassis at the moment. So you just it, it's like a, a car without body. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can drive yeah. around this already. Right. And then the body uh, shells. Uh, it's in the front. It's a clamshell uh opening and uh, in the rear there's also a big big trunk lid it's all made in carbon fiber and in the rear we have also like uh, it's plexiglass window in the rear because that's got this uh shape of of the naka duck uh, this yeah. is cool in, I, I i want to point that out because that's one of my favorite parts i mean your design is spectacular in my mind but 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 one of the coolest elements to me of of your design is this knock a duck at the at the on the roof kind of like the actually the car behind me you see the oops, yeah, yeah. it's this was the but, inspiration yeah the, 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 the pikes peak car is this super aggressive knock a duck on the in the roof and we said ah oh, come on we could do something similar because yeah we, we tried to pick out um seams from the old cars yeah and um, just to have a little bit of this retro feeling but in the same time, a modern you, car. You made it very elegant, though, the way it's, and I thought very trick, right? Like the way, not not just the duct, but but the way it exits along the glass is sort of tapered to continue the, the airflow uh, through mm -hmm. the glass. So so rather than just a straight panel glass at, at the back, it's it's got this continuation of the duct uh, into That's the right, design. Yeah. Really cool the way you did it. There's a 3D shape, yeah. Yeah. Uh, below this C pillar bridge, yeah, on on top of the car. See if I can now share again, just to for if we run the video version. The you can see the duct there at the top, and then I don't know if there's a view from the back. Maybe not on that one. Um, but so very cool. I mean, so many great details. I love that you did in this car. The the I I wouldn't. Yeah, and it's such an homage. I wouldn't call it overly right, retro, but at the same time, it is. It captures that shape that's so familiar, and and you do things that like, I, I, you know, in today's Audi is such a, from a design standpoint, they they have such a strong uh, uh, family of design, right? It's such like the single frame is such a strong element of what mm -hmm. they do that I don't know that they ever could have done this knows in the way you have and it's such an interesting way of doing that you know back in the day it was just a horizontal grill and Jajaro had it, it, it you know such a I, I believe he was the first b280 where kind of well i guess even the, before that the the b180 mm -hmm. but it was such a simple thing and um here you do it in a very in a very modern way that carries below the bumper and and it, it's almost a single frame in and of itself just wider and more integrating of the front end that i i it's such a unique <laughs> uh divert or direction to take the design that you both the dirt to blend the old audi design and the new um, well, thank you very much yeah. yeah we i think this was a process yeah we we started we, we, we sit together some friends and we made sketches and then we thought about how could this car look like in the front and and in the rear but it was clear that we need big wheels and short overhangs and maybe a muscle body and a coke yeah. bottle and a small cabin to make it sporty yeah or look sporty and so the design 
slightly appeared and um, we went straight into 3D modeling. This is what also our studios are famous for. We do this very fast and high professional 3D modeling process in-house. And then I had the time during all this Corona time in 2020, I had um, capacity to mill the car out in one-to-one and -one hmm. out of a piece of foam. And then so we, we was the chance to make little, little modifications on it. So, um, so that is that when it, process, but not the, not low low budget, but uh, yeah. quite a common process. Yeah. Is that when it kind of started during COVID, or have you been? I had this. The, the idea was, yeah, we had ideas to to come up uh, because this year is the 40th anniversary of the Hote Studios, and uh, a friend of mine and myself, we had. They had, had this idea to do a, a marketing uh, project and and then we said why don't we go back to the roots and take a story from the beginning and make a marketing story out of it and then the sport quattro idea came up and first i thought we we make and do a car like a a super restored as um, sport quattro or even s1 yeah like in a in a singer Porsche kind of way, right? Yeah? They do this brilliant uh, Porsches, yeah. Yeah. And, and I was like, oh, maybe we can do something like that. But then, mm, since we have all this in-house design um, process possibilities, mi uh, uh, modeling, milling, and all that in-house, I said, no. Why don't we do a new interpretation of the car and and, and show that we are able to create, that we are able to, to do the modeling of the car, that we are able to do even a one-to-one -one model. We've got this one-to-one -one model of the car sitting in our presentation hall now. And this was, yeah, and then the project was born, right. but it was not clear that we really do it in, in, a, in a limited edition of 30 running cars. It was just made as a, like a marketing show off okay yeah? and, but then i changed my mind because i had this idea with this partnership with roading with this engineering guys and after um, one or two meetings we we found this package this carbon monocoque package and we figured out this fits perfect yeah? we didn't have to to move around a lot and all the development on the platform was already done in hmm. roading yeah and and so because otherwise we could never afford to to do this kind of project this level of engineering right yeah? it's still very expensive i know and uh, <laughs> it's limited it. to 30 and we have to break down the costs on 30 cars right but there's not the, the platform development included this is on it's a license we've got from roading and this is very uh, was a very nice and uh, but roading is part of e-legend uh, um, we have we have we created this um, stock company this german stock company now we have founded the e-legend ag and roading is part of it as well very as cool. hote and other yeah. guys because you cannot do that alone you need friends and partners and they all have to be they need to have the will to do that yeah? right. without money because <laughs> now we can build these cars and we we are lucky that we already found first customers for the car as well. Have you? Yeah. And um, this makes us proud, but we still have lots of things to do. We, 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 we want to come up with this car next year. It will be the first car. It's, it's a prototype. But it's very close to production, and we will present it in summer. And uh, we have plans. We may come over to the US. I hope so. Oh, cool! It's, it's a financial thing, you know. It's yeah, yeah. very, it's very important uh, in um, expensive that we. Uh, I think nowadays fly out cars to the US is very expensive, and for right. us as a small startup, uh, it's not a classic startup because we have all this like partners with all this knowledge behind us but uh, yeah we're still uh, looking for a little bit more money for next year but if 
but I'm sure I'm very confident that we find it and then we can do all this uh, because uh, I think go to yeah, at least to, to California uh, in, in August, maybe to the Monterey Car Week. This would be very, very cool and, and a good possibility to show the car to the public, to the US public as well. Yeah. That would be spectacular. And it's such a, Monterey especially is such a, uh, a mecca, right? Like it's such a, everybody who's, yeah. who's in the business goes there. I, I, it's the place to be. Yeah? Yeah. yeah, that's not so much. I think all this classic moto shows like the Geneva moto show here in Europe, Geneva was always the place to be for yes. small areas and for, for things like that. But it's not there anymore, you know? It, it's such a shame, isn't it? The, the, whether it was Geneva, most, I mean, Geneva, especially for a car like this, uh, but even Frankfurt, um, you know, Paris, the, the, even the, I know the LA auto show just happened, you were there. Like it's, it's, it was good to see LA stronger than I expected, but at the same time, new car auto shows seem to be almost off a bit. And, yeah, and ever true. since the pandemic, they haven't really found uh, their pace yet. So I don't know. We'll see right. if it comes back. That's right. It's, it's, uh, the same here. We're struggling a little bit yeah. with this uh, auto shows. Uh, there's Munich IAA next year again. But but I hear and, this is more. Well, I don't know. Maybe with an electric. But I hear it's it's a little less automotive focused and a little bit more general transportation, right? So e-bikes and and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, I think I think it's still important that we show up. It's very close. Yeah, and it's here in Germany. Oh it's yeah, the biggest show in Germany, and I think we need to show up as a as e legend. We will uh, wave our flag, and, okay. and, and we'll, we will show up. <laughs> so if people, yeah. so if people are going, uh, yeah, because that's kind of one of the questions I had for you is where can people see the car? Hopefully Monterey, uh, but but if it so the Munich, the IAA, which was the Frankfurt Auto Show, is now kind of out of Munich and it's shifted a little bit uh, to be kind of general transportation. Uh, so like the e-bikes I mentioned, but so uh, much more EV focused. So this kind of fits that it, you'll, you'll definitely be there. I think so. Yeah. This is in September yeah. and it's, yeah, it's close. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, a must. Show, yeah. it's a must yeah. for us. I, I wouldn't say that we have a big stand. It's just, we will right. have a, something small, but we will have for sure a good idea to, to make this cool and, that needs to be i think the legend idea is that you come together and you can have a beer with us and just discuss about cars and possible other other e-legends for example oh yeah because no. you know the story behind e-legend now this is the funny thing then this is the marketing point now right uh, for the whole brand it's a new brand we call it e-legend and there's so many iconic cars out there in the us in europe in 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 asia and you can take uh, this this these ideas and and this spirit and you redesign it and of course it's it's not easy because you 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 shouldn't get too too close to the to the heritage of the the brand you uh, you reinterpret i think right. it must be there must be a kind of a um, a balance I, I i do not want to um yeah, come too close to to the this original heritage of the cars. It should be really free interpreted and just a homage to a to a famous to a famous icon of the past. Yeah, right. It's it's, it's not so easy. I'm I'm sure you cannot do that with with every brand, but uh, or with every car. Uh, but there is. There's lots of ideas outside. We even we said that there could be e legends named after um, famous races, uh, race um, or car races like Le Mans or Daytona or whatever you know. And you just hear this name, yeah. you hear Le Mans, and you think about the 24-hour race, and there was hundreds of super cool race cars racing yeah. a little more and you can you may can take out one or two and just take it as as an inspiration and create a new hypercar out of it electric yeah. based yeah for example yeah sure. and then this is the idea behind e-legend yeah it's not all about 
uh, taking um, Audis, for example. Yeah, this was a very special homage to the Audi. It's about our family business here. And right. because we're big fans and was at the end, it makes sense that we, we we've chosen the our Sport Quattro as a first e-legend. Yeah. It, it, it's interesting. I, I, I the, wait, the space you're occupying is fascinating to me because it's sort of a next step of, uh, on one hand, you have to me the the beginning in in uh, other people have done retro design or or these kind of continuation cars, if you will, right? Like Singer is a very well known one. You mentioned that earlier, and and Singer is interesting because like I think for a long time Porsche didn't know what to make of them, right? Like, I, but but I think now even if and Porsche is building some motors for them, but but uh, I think mm -hmm. they get it now that the what what you have to offer whether it's audi with this first car or whomever uh for as you continue your business i think it it adds to in my mind you know at least as an enthusiast and kind of speaking more on the passion side of the brand it it adds to uh the cachet of that brand in in a very unique way right and in ways that i don't know could be approved in a, a boardroom of a modern you know for-profit company you, you see exotics being made but what, what's what's interesting to me too is it's not a conventional thing right like this thing is exotic it, like that with a carbon tub and and all these things it's the the uh it's it's very exotic uh and much more exotic i've seen a, i drove the first uh quattro concept right like the the white one mm -hmm. um and and that car in person was a very cool car but it wasn't quite as exotic as this and and i think it was aluminum space frame um mm -hmm. you know this is this is lighter and and more ambitious i think in in what you're able to do because you're only making 30 right and 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 that you're able to do it with this with this pre-developed chassis is 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 mm. pretty pretty neat and it, it i don't know it, as an audi enthusiast i'd love to see a spark with the sport quattro but as a rally enthusiast and car enthusiast in general I, i'd also love to see, to see where you go because there's yeah. so many cool cars out there yeah exactly and um, now for the first cars um we really want to stay in the rally group b era yeah yeah you figured out that there was the audi s1 of course uh, and but you had other famous yeah, for cars sure. in this group b and we, we may do more interpretations out of this world at the moment yeah we yeah. because they fit super good to our chassis they all had this short wheelbases. The, 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 they all had a similar kind of architecture, this cars, yeah? Right. But Audi, Audi got the front engine. And Lancia, yeah. for example, had a mid-engine. Mid yeah, yeah. And uh, Ford RS200 as well. But when you put it right next to each other, I mean, when you look in the internet, you, you will find pictures or you will find lots of pictures when you see this car standing right next to each other. Right. Even as um, homologation cars as well. Yeah. With street, street legal cars. And yeah, they look very, yeah, this one family, yeah, but from different manufacturers. And I think we can, there will be something interesting coming up. Yeah. We definitely will not stop with this first e legend. We will show up with the next one very soon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but first we want to concentrate on on, on, yeah, yeah, yeah. on, on, on the e Legend One. But we already started to design the e Legend Two. Did you? And uh, yeah, we have to be do that a little bit in advance. Otherwise, we we will we cannot make it in time. Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. Well, it's interesting being. Uh, I guess that's one of the brilliant uh, things of going electric too, right? These Group B cars, like you said, summer. Uh, the the Sport Quattro was front engine, and then of course the mid engine cars arrive, and that really changes things. And while um, sort of make a modern version, if you were doing internal combustion, would be a bit of a challenge, wouldn't it? Because you have these <laughs> very different configurations. But by doing an electric, that's really not a concern. That's right. It's different, but uh, and and it's still you've got ten thousand five hundred parts in the year legend. Oh, we already know roundabout. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot it's still and without combustion engine yeah this is still lots of parts Crazy. Yeah? we have to package we have to i mean there's every single screw inside but right um it's it's still a lot lots of lots of parts uh but it's another it's another uh, package um you you have there's two engines each axle is an engine 
and you have the batteries packaged as a T bone almost yeah uh, in, in in the middle of the car okay and seating position is very low and the center of gravity is also very low and i hope i think we know that from other projects because the chassis was on the street already but was a little different you know it's always a little different right the wheelbase was a bit longer for example the last project roading did with a similar chassis with a similar uh, this all just happened this summer okay and we, we they they the good thing is it's all development it's all good for the for our car right. because we really know already we know what we can expect and 99 percent is clear how it will drive and how it will behave on the street but of course it got a even shorter wheelbase it's maybe more agile and yeah. you have to be careful because it's very very fast yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure so that that's how you got a lot of i see a lot of the new electrics uh coming out and even the the e-tron gt i i believe it's more of a um the battery is is almost like a skateboard right so you almost it creates almost a taller you're able mm -hmm. to get quite low is that is that you mentioned this t-shaped battery that's mm -hmm. So, so you're able to put get get the driver and passenger a little bit lower in the chassis. Yeah, very low. Everything. Very low. Yeah. You have a very low seating position, very sporty seating position. Um, we, we, we are still hiding our interior because it's unfinished. It's almost there, and it will will be. Yeah, we will publish it very soon, and then you can see it's very. Um, it's race car inspired interior yeah, yeah. It's more modern it's not as um let's say um, it's not as retro than the exterior might might is yeah it's uh it's it's very progressive and in this also um, yeah because we have this um yeah low seating position and yeah, very um yeah I, I will say monocoque huh, around you. You were kind enough to let me. I'm not. I won't talk about it because you haven't really. Uh, you haven't released it. I can't but, talk about it. I mean, uh, it's just. I love the interior. You, you, when I was in your studio a couple of weeks ago, you you were kind enough to let me throw on the VR goggles and take a look inside the car, and and um, it was it was uh, it's strikingly, but cohesively modern, right? Like I, I I got in like, is this going to look like the the Sport Quattro and kind of very retro and it, it did not at all I, I i think that's what works it works in the interior almost it's more modern than even the exterior of your car but i don't i don't well the the exterior of your car is very familiar i don't see it as overly retro right like it's it's mm -hmm. it's still quite modern um and and um you know there have been designs you know look at like jame jame's and retro futurism and and whatever but i think this one just does it so basically and like your the interior you mentioned it's just a modern uh cool kind of uh sporting uh look and it, it was very pleasantly different than yeah, yeah it made cool. sense Thank you. Yeah. yeah it's good to hear that you like it yeah it's uh, yeah. it's always uh, you when you start to design something you, you you never know exactly how the audience will if they yeah. like it or not but the only thing you can do is you can really try to give your best and and design is always it takes time and and then you have to try you sometimes you need a, a 3d model to right to double check everything it takes time and and of course it's a, a budget as well you need for that but uh, and the technic packages yeah there's lots of discussions going on what kind of um, screens we are using or we need to find the right parts uh, for the car then they need to be affordable in on one hand and the other hand they need to be advanced yeah right. and it's um, but i think we have a, we have the right balance now we are really happy and it, uh, is is that the challenge then with electric side it sounds like you got you know you certainly have an advantage with roading and and uh, proximity and partnership with them from what they already brought to the table and of course you bring all this design uh mm -hmm. acumen to the table but but uh but then the technology side right i guess for a for a uh, a niche 
manufacturer only building 30 you know you said that, that that's got to be to to make something very modern and substantive that, that that's probably the biggest challenge then to in building a modern yeah. car that's right uh, it's um, luckily we we have a really good engineering team and we can do lots of little things in house uh, yeah. with with our engineering team but in terms of software when it comes to uh, interface for example uh, um, a simple bluetooth connection with apple carplay for example yeah this is a license you have to buy and it's very 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 expensive for yeah. a small series manufacturer it's not affordable yeah unfortunately it yeah. could there could be a special you know um, deal for for smaller guys like us but it isn't unfortunately <laughs> yeah, and, <laughs> yeah, yeah so we have to find our own way but we will integrate a nice uh, the your mobile phone will find a nice place in our car and uh, we will have an interface but we will have our own yeah but it's that's a cool thing on the other side because uh, we do very uh, minimalistic graphics it rem will remind you to in uh, the 1980s digital graphics of oh of, cool of quattro a little bit yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a bit this style and uh yeah i'm 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 happy with it you know and you always have to find compromises here and there and of course you cannot have everything in your car um, um, uh, exclusive production car guts right now uh, as an option for example it's um, yeah but um, I'm both surprised uh, how much uh, we can really uh, deliver and how much we can develop uh, it's it will be a modern car but Luckily, it's a sports car, and and you do not expect so much comf comfort in a sports car than in a in a luxury car, yeah? in a in a yeah. limo, for example. Yeah. Or so, in so the basics on the car. Uh, what what's the horsepower? You know, it's eight hundred and sixteen. Out of that weight car, that will be very fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's see, and it's it's a single speed transmission. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and so but will be incredible acceleration and lots of talk uh, and and this must be leveled and uh, as a customer you can really um, do this with our engineering team you can set up the car a little bit more in towards top speed or acceleration this is up to you this is a bit oh yeah this we can yeah also the the suspension setup can be um, uh, yeah, um, um, kind of made to our preference adjusted like you yeah. wanted yeah it's really we are flexible and we will every customer will uh, have the maximum on on individual adjustments yeah it's what, what he what he prefers interesting so, so how would the um you, you're getting ready to make 30 you, you've got a, a a running mule now and you're working towards a driving prototype with the with the body the how does how does that work then if somebody's interested in buying the car like how much do you think it will be and what do they do if they want to order one the car is eight hundred and ninety thousand euros net okay for tax and it is um, right now we, our our uh, contracts um, uh, to purchase this car is uh, they are divided in three steps. There's one um, preliminary payment in upfront, yeah, right. and then there's two more payments, and it's um, um, you will be. It's I always say it's kind of a journey because we will really pick you up and um yeah and we show the customer along um, we built the car we, there will be several meet, several meetings um okay. during that time during that per period yeah and uh, it will be very individual yeah and you can set up your car like you want and you have Lots of possibilities uh, to uh, in in color and trim as well and and little details we have 
prepared so, also. So, so safe to say, most all thirty will probably be unique to the owners. I think so. Yeah. I think so. We have um, setups. We we will come up with. Uh, I think we have three, cl uh, five classic colors, and we have uh, three like modern, advanced colors, yeah. and and also yeah, we together with the interior design team, and we, we will set up a nice yeah, at least ten or fifteen combinations you can yeah. just order, or of course we do it like like it's you imagine the car. Right. Uh, there's unlimited ways yeah it sounds amazing <laughs> I, 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 yeah, it's the coolest thing yeah because yeah. you really can do it one after another we will have um the plan is to build one to two cars a month and during the time period of 24 25 26 so first cars will be delivered in 24 so very pretty soon. I mean, in in the in the scheme of developing your own car, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and in comparison with thirty, there were what 200, 220, somewhere around there, Sport Quattro. So this this is would be quite a bit more exclusive. Is is it? Uh, well, I guess that's another question I have for you. As an American, mm -hmm. I know that we can be a bit of a challenge to have cars homologated for the U.S. to to sell. I don't know if manufacturing at your quantities if there's some exceptions to that but it will it will it, if americans are interested in purchasing a car is that will it be hard to register for the us or is that no we are working on it uh, right. the homologation point of view i think we be already um considering and we we need to have little bits and pieces on the car and we have but it's not so far away from the european hom homologation yeah? okay uh, uh, this will work and uh, we we reached out to find some partners already in california and um, i think this will work i hope right. that we can deliver cars i think so i, I hope you can too yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Try, i'm trying to figure out how i can afford one but <laughs> but beyond that i would just love uh, to see them over here yeah. yeah i hear what you're saying but uh -huh. it's um yeah um Unfortunately, this is very exclusive in pricing. Eh? Yeah, it's yeah. Well, you know what though, where, where you're in in the market it is, you know, Singer. There are a lot of cars in that space uh, mm -hmm. that are that are so, so to have something this unique, even uh, whether it's the Sport Quattro or Singer. I think have done well more than 100 now of their original car. Who knows how uh, D, the DLS uh, probably mm -hmm. a bit more closer to your numbers, but but uh, regardless, this is a highly unique thing, and and. I, you know, I, I find where the, the car market is today and, and having something so unique, but also so forward, you know, it's electric, it's, it's made of the, the latest materials. Like it's, it's, um, it's a, it's a very unique thing. I, you know, while I would love to be able to afford one and, and would have to probably make a real sales job to my wife to be, <laughs> to justify well, I it, if I, I have it. I'm doing my best to, to, to give you a, a yeah. little uh, discount. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have but, to discuss with all the others. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see with the boss. The boss at home. I don't know if she'd agree, but but um, <laughs> but at the same time, it's it's. I I think it's it's such an amazing what you've assembled here is a really great value, right? Like it's it's such an exotic car. Uh, it and and so where the market is, I don't know. I it seems, you know, it seems very appropriate to what you're getting. Yeah. Yeah. So it's right. um, you see there's lots of all the hours we spent we, we already spent for for the design process and uh, because this was still going on to be honest yeah, yeah. because you do the detailing you uh, the b surfaces when once you open the car you you want to have everything nice and um, this i think this is one of the biggest issues the design process, the the costs for the design process, and then all the engineering and the uh, the luck we have with with the, um, the pre-developed carbon monocoque on roading side yeah. and all that it makes it very special, uh, I must say. Yeah. And for sure, I hope it's worth the money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I trust it will be. That it's it's remarkable. I will say, um, I just prepping for. 
uh, this call watching for if people want to follow this uh, just worth checking on Instagram what your e legend is e legend mm-hmm. underscore ag uh, mm-hmm. but then also you yourself uh, the, the design nerd in me whether it's you so it's Marcus under, underscore Olsinger. actually I, I can share the screen in case uh, somebody's watching the video uh, this is you uh, on Instagram and and what's very cool here is not just seeing that on your account seeing not just the e-legend development but some of the the other design uh, that your firm Hotel Design has done as well um, I think I saw was it you uh, um, there's the prologue concept you guys projects, yeah, as well yeah yeah some some very interesting projects um, yeah I do PBA some posts team. once in a while yeah yeah this was concept cars we built here and I think um, that the concept card, yeah, this was design process of the of the uh, actual of the latest R S six. R S six, and I've got to say, so I, I'm a nerd for these cars too. Yeah, I love the the current R S six. These were this is a design. Uh, was this a model or a prototype at least? Uh, this this the, is a design freeze model. Yeah. Okay. This is like the the latest model. The, um, these these wheels are incredible they never made they have yet they haven't made these wheels for this car but it looks probably it looks too phenomenal. complicated <laughs> yeah. perhaps so but look look fantastic so probably worth checking if you're listening to the audio on mark's uh um instagram accounts the the rs6 design freeze models is it's stuff like this that like if you want to catch uh some great uh some great detail you're also of course you're you're um yeah, design is yeah, the studio has its own Instagram account with some even gr- like more fantastic uh, design stuff. Yeah. I saw it, the B two. Is this an early one? The the B two development, uh, the eighty. I think, um, I think this was the first model, uh, uh, or one of the first models they delivered. Complete models, yeah, they delivered. This was like, yeah, this here is my father sitting in his office. Yeah, that's how. And this it is that like. just the studio one that you mentioned? Is this the first? Yeah, this was the very first place. Exactly, it was just a few rooms. And then over the, the years, over the decades, the, the studio got bigger and bigger. It's interesting too. The, again, the design, the Audi nerd in me is seeing this as an early B2 model. And I see that kind of more uh, upright. So I'm guessing more to the original B280 design, but you've got these Urquatra looking bumpers on the thing. Um, the grill is is wider slats like that from a design perspective is... It's just stuff you've maybe never seen. Uh, it, I mean, you have clearly, Marcus, but 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 enthusiasts may have never seen. But it's great uh, history and and detail from uh, from how you've worked it with Audi over the years. Um, yeah, nah, very it's, very. It's cool. Forty years and was always a very close um, collaboration. Yeah, yeah. you mentioned you. So you work with other manufacturers too, um, primarily Volkswagen Group, but not not always. Yeah. So you, you do not always the many many um, other brands have, um, mostly mostly Scandinavian brands as well like okay. Volk, uh, Volvo and oh. and Polestar as well but we had we had projects with BMW and with Mercedes as well but not as many yeah, yeah. i think uh, the relationship to Volkswagen is very strong and to the Volkswagen group and um yeah also to the people yeah yeah you know each other and they have lots of trust in our work and in the same time they can really leave us alone they don't have to hold our hand we can we can build these things and they can concentrate to to new stuff already yeah, yeah. this is the meaning behind the design model making uh, you you want to help the design team yeah, they they shouldn't have work with you. They yeah. they they give data to you or a, the project, and you help you you do the three D modeling. You create new data or you create the models, and and then at the end you build the the physical model, and uh, you do not have to or the design team doesn't need to be there all the time you know yeah. but you it's so you're probably what 30 30 minutes drive from ingolstadt so you're 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 quite close exactly, to Audi. Yeah. exactly yeah it's, yeah it's lots of most of the people around here they they used to work for audi or they still do 
Yeah. It's very normal here in this area huh, too. It's such a did, big factory. Did, yeah. did that make it easier as you were develop? You decided I'm going to develop my own car uh, during the pandemic. That that Roding yeah. or other partners in the area, and BMW's just down the road in Munich, Stuttgart, Mercedes, and Porsche not far kind of all in the yeah. neighborhood of southern germany that's, that's right there is not so not so much uh, small serious projects came up uh, from germany the last years and i was a bit like mm, germany is so famous for cars and yeah. why don't we do something yeah we, we we see that in italy and and even like in sweden you know when you look at Königsegg, yeah for example why don't we do something new, something special in Germany? Yeah, and this was the initial idea. It's it. I'll tell you, it's cool to see this kind of coming. We, earlier in the conversation, you kind of mentioned the auto shows and kind of how they've been on the decline. Geneva. I remember going to Geneva and seeing uh, in it, like 2000s to, you know, really to the pandemic, seeing these kind of specialty niche car manufacturers, whether it was the, the traditional houses like Bertoni or, or whether, you know, you yeah. see... And, and there were a fair number that used the the Audi componentry, right? Spiker uh, used the the engine at least. And I know um, there was a a very brief, unfortunately, never got there. Uh, a Spano Suiza project on on the R8 that I think uh, Roland yeah. from MTM was involved in. Gary Kimmel, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gumpert, uh, same thing. Like the 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 Apollo, the the these cars kind of when the pandemic. Uh, kind of happened they, they you know a lot of these companies have kind of gone away as as has the geneva auto shows relevance in that space and and um it's nice it's nice to see life again in these kind of specialty projects in a very modern way right like the an electric here is it's it's where we're going and it's 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 the mm. future and and so seeing uh seeing it happening in, in, in a different way too now you don't need a, an audi uh engine like spiker may have had right but but instead now you you've got this very interesting design language and and um and of course you have the the components up from roading it's it's a fascinating project i really must say it's <laughs> thank it's, you it's, thank you uh, yeah it, it, and, um, it got a lot of love too when i put the photos on on, on social media when we were uh, after coming out of your studio it's uh, so many people are really it, just such a great response to the car um, okay cool uh, yeah i'm happy to hear that uh, <laughs> Yeah, we we are pushing, and uh, I can say we we have meetings every day, and we we are in a good way. Um, and I'm really looking forward to, um, to presenting the the first full running car next year. But yeah, of course, it's still lots of work to do. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I wish you luck, and I thank you so much for giving me time this morning. I I know you're very busy, especially back from LA. And and, uh, welcome no no i'm back for a while now but uh yeah. unfortunately because here the here it's dark and gray and cold <laughs> outside and yeah. la was really nice it's always so many cars and so many car enthusiasts enthusiasts around and yeah. this is the thing yeah when you go there and and you want to see the um cars and coffee and all that you know did you, <laughs> because did you have a chance to get around I had to a chance on sunday we we had a nice uh, a little there was a cars and coffee in in the well out in in, in uh, the valley yeah and then we, we drove uh, through the um, mountains towards yep. malibu and then there was the old place and so on and then we yeah. we had a little break there and cars came by and and once a sudden a showed uh, s audi s1 showed up yeah i was going to ask but i saw you posted that on social media is this, was this planned or this guy no no this was by mistake and he this just is showed up it was a sign you know yeah. <laughs> it was, for me it was just um, um, incredible amazing and i said why why do you show up with this car you know and he's like yeah i just bought it i bought oh, it yeah. yesterday he said <laughs> amazing i mean that, this is la though right like the, the amazing yeah. thing you when i bring it out to, this was LA, so great la is such an amazing place unfortunately the malibu cars and coffee is kind of i, I hear bills closing and, i think malibu so kitchen yeah. and uh, but the other one to hit if you're ever in la is is good vibes breakfast clubs friday mornings so it's it's hard but a lot of creative uh go up there and it's on angeles mm -hmm. crest highway at the um i forget the name of like the kind of abandoned hotel restaurant that's at the at the top mm -hmm. there but 
but um i, I will go back definitely yeah once yeah. <laughs> i hope i will have the chance to yeah. go back to la next year and that maybe even with the with the legend yeah, yeah well Please let it, I will say that. Please let us know if you plan on uh, any plans you have for bringing it to the U.S. Yeah, of course, a lot of our, yeah, a lot of our our members and our following are American and or North American, yeah, in Canada as well. And and so if the car is going to be over here, um, and, and who knows, maybe if we have some some guests, or some people in in Germany, I'll give you a call. Maybe we can swing by and, and check it out. But I will keep you updated and yeah. for sure, yeah. Cool. Thank you again. I appreciate you taking the time. Yeah. Thank you.